Hi everyone, it's Kelly here. Welcome to my channel if this is your first time. Welcome back if you've been before. Lovely to have you either way. On this channel we talk books and today I am filming a big, big book haul. I have lots and lots of things to show you so let's get straight into it. Although I will preface it by saying the chair I'm sitting on today is a little bit squeaky so apologize. I apologize in advance if um, it gets a little squeaky as I'm kind of like turning to get things and moving around, but I'll try to keep my movement to a minimum. Okay, um, I want to talk to you today about um, books, but I also want to show you some cute bookish things that I got from this shop, Hooked on a Book AU. It's an Etsy shop and I'll link it down below. Um, she makes these gorgeous keychains um, that look like a little mini book. They're stuck together. They don't open, um, but it's got a book cover. And this one is The Song of Achilles, which is one of my favorites. So I was very excited to get that. I also ordered a couple of bookmarks. So these were the two I ordered. Well, change it so you, the light isn't uh, reflecting too much there. And then I also was given a, a free gift of a bookmark as well which is really cute so thank you very much i'm very very excited to have those and um lovely to find another place to get my bookmarks from um especially one that's in australia so that the shipping doesn't kill you <laughs> uh all right so those are my little bookish treats that i got i think what i'll do is i'm going to show you the new books that I've bought first, um, and then we'll look at the secondhand books I've bought. It's the pile has just collapsed. Excuse me. Hi, I'm back. <laughs> okay, so uh, first of all, I'm going to show you two books that I've bought copies of because I'm going to be reading them with um, one of my book clubs that I'm in. So these are two different book clubs, um, and so I've purchased the books for that purpose. I want to say there's another. No, that's going to be a library book. That's okay. All right. So the first one is A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers, a monk and robot book. This is the first one in the series. It's a very short little thing. Uh, I think it's often described as cozy fantasy. So if that seems up your alley, um, then this one might be one to check out. Lots and lots of people have been talking about this one. So I'd be very surprised if you haven't heard of it already. Um, but basically, I believe this is a book about, um, so it's sort of like a future or perhaps a, an alternative future. So it says, it's been centuries since the robots of Panga gained self-awareness and laid down their tools. Centuries since they wandered en masse into the wilderness, never to be seen again. Centuries since they faded into myth and urban legend. One day, the life of a tea monk is upended by the arrival of a robot there to honour the old promise of checking in. The ro robot has one question, what do people need? But the answer to that question depends on who you ask and how. They're going to need to ask it a lot. I won't be reading this one until April, I think. So uh, it'll be a while before I check back in about this book, but I will definitely be reading this one very, very soon. The other book that I bought for a book club, a different book club, is The School for Good Mothers by Jessamine Chan. Um, this one I'm really interested in. So basically the premise of it is... Um, so I would say it's kind of a dystopian and, uh, essentially it's a world very similar to ours right now. Only if you do something that is deemed as being a bad parent, you get, your child is taken away from you and then you're sent to this kind of like re-education school, um, to be educated in how to be a good mother, which in theory sounds like not not a massive thing but I think it has like dystopian undertones to it so it's not not everything is as it seems and perhaps the way that men and women are treated in this these circumstances is different so um you know it's kind of like one of those dystopians that shines a light on something in society that is like potentially problematic or you know this is where this could go you know like so um yeah I'm interested to read all about that one 
Okay, those were the two that I've purchased and have arrived this month um, for uh, that were for book clubs that I'm in um, that I'll be so I will be reading those ones very very soon. Uh, here are the ones that I've bought based on recommendations um, from other people or I've just heard about them and have been really really interested in them so I've bought myself a copy um, brand new. So this one, ooh, that's hard to see, is Infused Adventures in Tea by Henrietta Lovell. This is a non-fiction book. Oh I forgot to check and see what its call number is. I'll put it on the screen for you and it will be down in the um, the description below as well. Um, so if you're that's if you're following along at home for the um, for our nonfiction reading challenge, the Dewey Decimal Reading Challenge for this year. So uh, this is a, um, a memoir, I believe. Um, and the author I have not heard of before, but apparently she's best known as the Rare Tea Lady. Um, and she is on a mission to revolutionise the way we drink tea by replacing industrially produced tea bags with an appreciation for the best quality leaves. And I am a tea drinker. I've got um, leaves that I prefer from certain places that I get them. I, I'm not a massive sh uh, supermarket tea drinker. So this sort of sounded right up my alley. Um, and I'm keen to kind of like get some insights from her about, you know, particular regions of the world where tea is produced and so on. So I'm very excited to read this one. Uh, then I picked this one up. I cannot remember who recommended this book, but if I remember, I will pop it on the screen for you. Um, this is Wade in the Water by Niani Nkurama. I'm so sorry. I'm sure I have butchered that surname and I'm very sorry. <laughs> um, this one, the person who was recommending this was like, this is like the one of the best books that they've read so far this year, or perhaps they read it last year. Um, so I was like really, really keen to get myself a copy of it uh, based on that recommendation. And I will put it in um, on the screen for you to say who it was that recommended it, because I'm sure I'll be able to remember by the time I come to edit. So a stunning literary debut featuring two unforgettable people. Uh, resonant with the emotional urgency of Alice Walker's classic Meridian and the poignant charm of Sumac Kid's The Secret Life of Bees, Wade in the Water tells the story of an unforgettable summer in 1982, seen largely through the eyes of Ella, a young, mistreated black 11-year-old girl who lives with Leroy, who resents her, and Ma, who cannot stand to look at her. Ella's world is changed when Catherine St. James, a mysterious white researcher from Princeton, arrives in their racially divided Mississippi town. Uh, so it sort of I th looks like it might be kind of like an interesting friendship between two unlikely friends. Um, so, yeah, that, that sounds really interesting to me. I, I don't know Meridian um, that it was compared to, but I have read The Secret Life of Bees and did enjoy it like many moons ago when I when I read that book. So that's Wade in the Water. Um, then, I'll show those ones at the end. Uh, here's this one. Okay, so I've got Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. Um, I don't know that I saw anyone re recommending this one necessarily, but I saw people talking about it, a few few different people now, and I it just sounded really up my alley, so I bought myself a copy. Very excited about this one. Um, so this is about a woman who's writing an encyclopedia of fairy lore, which sounds really cool. Uh, this is one that I also heard being um, recommended. And again, I cannot remember who it was, but it's Big Swiss by Jen Began. Began? Sorry if I, I I'm not sure. Um, and this sounded so interesting to me. So basically this is about a woman whose job it is to, she transcribes for a psychiatrist, I think it is, um, his sessions. And so she's just handed the recording and she has to transcribe them, you know, into the written word. And so she doesn't know any of the people. She's not involved at all, but she, um, there are, there's, and she has like code names for some of the people that, um, that are the clients that he sees. And then, uh, one of them she calls Big Swiss, presumably because 
they have a you know swiss sounding accent or perhaps it's mentioned in one of the first transcriptions that you know that they're from switzerland so she calls this person big swiss and um then at, but and as she's listening she starts to kind of like fall in love with this person just from listening to them talk about their life and then she hears out in the wild hears the voice and recognizes the voice and so then it sort of becomes this like weird uh affair relationship situation where she knows more than the other so anyway it just sounded intriguing to me so i got myself a copy of that one and the other one that I've heard lots and lots of people talking about on the internet that I had to get myself a copy of was The Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. And this uh, is, again, I has been marketed to me, at least. I don't know if this is the intention of the author, as a cosy fantasy. Um, so I'm quite interested in this one. I believe this is the one where... We've got, um, a, a, it says on the back, live-in tutor wanted for three young witches, must have nerves of steel, previous teaching experience not necessary, witchiness essential, um, which sounds so fun. Um, so essentially this is a woman who is going to kind of be a governess um, of some description to young witches, which sounds really cool. Um, then I've got two books here that I bought brand new, but they're part of um, the, I bought them from a book bookstore called Amplify Bookstore. And they have a sort of um, subscription that you can um, join. And I, this was the first time I've received books from them. So the one that I got is the Discovery Pack. And this is um, essentially books around the world um, or that are from and from different regions so they have a focus for the for that um, month I think it comes out every every two months um, and, but you get two books as part of that so um, and also some art so I I got this this art as well um, I hold this over on TikTok and Instagram so if you follow me if you don't already follow me there my links will be below um, for those two platforms. Um, so you can have a look at everything that was in the pack. Um, but uh, the purpose of Amplify Bookstore is to amplify voices of, you know, marginalised or, you know, uh, people from other countries, you know, it's, so it's not just white people, um, which appeals to me quite a lot because I, I do like to try to diversify um, what I'm reading as much as possible. Um, so the two books that I got in my discovery pack in February were these two. So we've got Shastra Deo's The Exclusion Zone and The Matchmaker by Saman Shad. Um, so it's, this region is Oceania, um, but these are still um, uh, marginalized voices within in Oceania, Oceania. So yeah, I'm super excited to get to these at some point. Um, I'm thinking that I might want to get to this somewhat soon. Oh, here's the uh, card. So that is, it's the discovery pack if you're interested. Um, and you can have a look at them. I'll just hold that up so you can see their details. Amplify Bookstore on all of the platforms so that's all my books that i've bought new um this month uh then i also have a few books that i have picked up secondhand to show you um some of them i'm not going to show you in a whole lot of detail where did i put that stack maybe i'm not going to show them to you at all no i've moved them away you're not going to get to see them. I hauled a, a bunch of books. Um, so my husband and I went to a, um, a Lifeline book sale. It was sort of like a big event type of one. So I occasionally go, Lifeline is a charity um, here in Australia. I don't know how, if it's a, an international one or not. I, it might just be in Australia. Um, and uh, they 
do books. They have like just normal secondhand shops as well that are like, you know, a mixture of secondhand things. Um, but they have book specific ones. So they sort of like specialize in books, I guess. And um, they every now and again will run these kind of like in a big community hall type of situation um big sales so we went to one of these big sales and i bought a bunch of books there um again i hauled these over on instagram and booktok tiktok <laughs> bookstagram booktok instagram tiktok um so if you want to have a look at what i got um, you can go and have a look over on my page the links will be in the description below. Um, so I'm not going to show those to you again, uh, but I do have some more books that I've picked up secondhand. Um, so the first little stack that I'm going to show you is from Sappho Books. Um, so there's their bookmark. Uh, this is uh, in a suburb called Glebe in Sydney, and it's a secondhand bookshop that's been around for quite some time. Um, and they have a really good selection of secondhand books. I would say they're sort of on the pricier end of secondhand books. Like they, they sort of know what they've got, so they'll price accordingly. But I managed to find a few, um, you know, really good things that I was very interested to get to. So the first one is Kunadu by Catherine Susanna Pritchard. I heard about this book, um, when I was reading books that made us, um, and I will link in the cards to the video where I talked about that book. So this is one of the books that was mentioned in that book um, that sounded interesting to me. So I thought I'd grab it. It's about, um, essentially, it's set in the past and we've got an Aboriginal, an Australian Aboriginal woman who falls in love with a white, um, you know, cattle man and... Uh, he sort of also has feelings for her, but of course, at the time, there was a lot. There's a lot of um, stigma attached to that, so you know it's uh, potentially going to be a doomed love story. I'm not sure, um, but yeah, I'm really interested to read that. So, as you can see, it's a very old, um, <laughs> an old copy because it's an old book. Uh, let me see when it was published first published in 1929 so it's been around for some time so this is part of like our Australian um you know literary history so I'm really interested to read that at some point um I believe I already hauled a copy of this book but it was the um the cover was the movie tie-in edition which I'm never a fan of for the most part so I found a really nice copy of Our Souls at Night by Kent Haruf and I am very excited to read this one. It's a quite a skinny book, so it shouldn't be a, a huge read, but I'm really interested in um, having a look at that one. Uh, another one that I found there was No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood. This was nominated for and shortlisted, I believe, for the, yes, shortlisted for the Women's Prize in 2021. Um, and it was also shortlisted for the 2021 Booker Prize. Um, so this was a very well-liked book um, from 2021 that I'm really interested to have a look at. And I believe this is the one that's about um, social media. Yeah, social media. So it's a, apparently quite a nuanced look at things um, that isn't like social media terrible. Um, it's just sort of like looking at things in a more nuanced way. The other one that I got that I was quite excited to get was this one, Wood Green by Sean Rabin. I already own a copy of this on the Kindle, but it was a five-star read for me. And as I've mentioned in a previous video, I have started to collect my five-star reads because I, and if I didn't already have a physical copy of it, I've been looking for it. This is really hard to get now. Um, so when I saw this, I, it was one of those moments when you're in the shop and you go, <gasps> like you audibly gasp because you find something really exciting and every single time this happens to me all the time every time that happens it's like I have to get the book off the shelf as quickly as possible so like I'm like really quickly getting it off the shelf like an idiot um so <laughs> yeah that happened in Sappho Books in Glebe so that was fun um but yeah I was very very excited to get myself a copy of this um so this is all about a guy who is an aspiring writer and he 
takes a job as the secretary to his literary hero, 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 um, Lucien Clark, who is a novelist that's like quite reclusive, um, lives in Tasmania in a sort of like remote cottage in Tasmania. And um, then it's sort of like there's a few people in the town that are part of this book as well. But it's really weird. It gets weird. So, yeah, I really enjoyed this back at the time when I read it. So I'm going to potentially read this again. Um, but very happy to now have a physical copy of a book that I enjoyed so much. Um, right. So that was Sappho Books. And then I got a couple of books from somebody who was selling them on Facebook Marketplace. Um, we got a copy of Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. Um, this was also long, long listed, short listed as well, I believe, for the Women's Prize for Fiction in 2021. But obviously this edition was um, when the, only the long list had come out potentially. Um, I also got a copy of The Reading List by Sarah Nisha Adams. Um, and this is all about somebody finding a, a crumpled reading list tucked into a tattered library book and then um, I believe going and reading all of the books on the reading list. So yeah, that sounded like lots of fun. And the other one I got a copy of, it's a tiny bit damaged at the bottom, which is a shame, but the price was right, is The Lost Apoc Apothecary, Apothecary by um, Sarah Penner, uh, which I, I believe I have a digital copy of, but yeah, when I saw that there was a hardback um, copy of it available from this seller. Um, I was very keen to get it. Uh, the naked hardback's not that exciting, but it is a pretty colour. So uh, it's all right. We, we can live with it. We can keep the dust jacket on. All right, let me just move these books and then I will get right back to you. Okay, I am back. <laughs> um, so I've got more to show you. I'm going to go through these quite quickly, I think. Um, and I probably won't spend a lot of time talking about each one because I can see that the minutes I've been recording is starting to creep up. So um, this one is another book I got secondhand, The Agathas by Catherine Glasgow and Liz Lawson. Um, this is Agatha Christie adjacent. So I believe these two, um, some friends sort of, uh, go all Agatha Christie trying to investigate a disappearance, I believe. So this sounded really cool. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Are you okay? <laughs> um, I got a copy of Tender is the Flesh. I don't know if I want to read this one. I'll be honest with you, but I've heard lots of good things about it. Uh, it's by Ag Agostina Batsarica. Batsarica. Um, sorry about the pronunciation of that surname that, that is undoubtedly wrong. Um, so this is Tender is the Flesh and it is about cannibalism. Um, so I don't know if I want to read it, but I got myself a copy because I am intrigued by it and I've heard lots of good things about it. Um, the other one that I picked up, this is probably my most recent um, secondhand shopping trip, um, is Letters to a Young Poet by uh, Rilke. And I've, again, heard lots of good things about this. So I'll be, although I have read another book by Rilke that I didn't enjoy. It was the one about grief. Um, and I didn't think it was particularly helpful, to be honest, um, when I was grieving. at the t And I read it at the time while I was grieving. I was like, this is not, I'm not getting much out of this, to be honest. So I'm, I'm in two minds about this, but hopefully this, um, I think this is probably accepted to be probably one of the most Im uh, important works by Rilke and um, beloved works by Rilke. So if, if Rilke is for me, then hopefully this will be something that I really enjoy. Um, another book that I picked up secondhand is this very, very small book, and it's called The Tiny Book of Tiny Stories um, 3. So this is the third edition. I didn't know that these were um, being made. So this is um, from Hit Record, and which is a website um, that's run by Joseph Gordon-Levitt, um, and he's listed as the author here and also Wiro. Um, but essentially what they do is they have, like, it's a community of creators, and so, like, there are writers, there are artists, there are, you know, people that do all sorts of things, um, you know, people that work in film, etc. So they do lots of creative projects, and essentially the call goes out for something, people send in their... Um, 
whatever it is and then um, it kind of gets collated on the website and anyone who's involved is listed as a creator etc um, and so this I think they also get paid if it's depending on the project so um, this essentially is a collection of like literally a sentence um, or two and that is the story and then they've collated that with illustrations by different illustrators and I my guess would be I haven't investigated is that there will be a big list of everyone who contributed to this book at the back yeah so big list of all of the creators there so if there's something that like really tickles your fancy you can kind of look into that creator and kind of get more information about them so that's that right I said I was going to talk about these very briefly and now then I've been talking about them far too long right more quickly Burnt Sugar um, by Avni Doshi this also was this was long listed for the 2020 Booker Prize um, and also the Women's Prize if memory serves so um, this will be a a good read hopefully um, I picked up a, another Emma Donahue book I haven't read the previous one that I bought um, but I think lots of people really love Emma Donahue, and of course she's been, um, the one that I got before was The Wonder and that's just been made into a film um, and people are raving about it. So um, I saw this, so this was an author by essentially Haven um, by her. Uh, so this is set in 7th century Ireland, which is interesting. So very excited to get to, uh, to get to Emma Donahue at all and hopefully to that one as well another women's prize previous uh long lister short lister um is the paper palace by miranda Kelly heller so again just a familiar familiar looking book picked it up um to hopefully get to it at some point this is a book i've had my eye on more so for the cover than for the um the content because i couldn't tell you what it, the book is about um but it's french braid by ann tyler I don't know what it is about the photo on the cover of this book, but it's so intriguing to me. Um, she just seems like a really interesting person. I want to know what the story is, but I'm not going to look. We'll just find out when we get to it. Uh, this one is the last fiction book. So this is Milkman by Anna Burns, which was shortlisted for the Orange Prize. Or is she shortlisted for the Orange Prize? Anyway, this one was the winner of the Man Booker Prize in 2018. Um, so this is all about a milkman. Um, but the intriguing thing about this one is that all of the characters that are mentioned in the blurb on the back are called things like middle sister, first brother-in-law, milkman so i don't know if like the through the whole book nobody um has a name that's interesting to me so i don't know we'll see and then the last book that i picked up was this one um mainly because i i am in love with annabelle crab um so this is by annabelle crab and lee sales it's called well hello meanderings from the world of chat 10 looks three which is the podcast that they um do together so which i have not listened to I should. I should listen to it because, as I said, I'm in love with Annabelle Crabb. So um, she, they, these guys are both uh, journalists. So Annabelle Crabb is sort of like a political commentator, um, but she also is really into cooking. She had a cooking show where she was going to Australian politicians' houses and cooking with them and then eating together. And Lee Sales used to um, present um, a pretty well-known um, news program here in Australia um, and I also read her book um, last year I think it was and it was a five-star read for me um, so yeah I can only imagine that there are good things within here um, so I was very happy to find myself a copy so that is finally it for my <laughs> book haul for February. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm not going to attempt to hold up the books because there is no way I can hold up that many books um, in one go. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye.